First up, news from the state of Punjab. Navjot Singh Sidhu could have been ousted from the Punjab cabinet because he wasn't present for the crucial cabinet meeting that has now led to speculation that he could have been booted out of the cabinet. This comes after Navjot Singh Sidhu had recently made several comments against the chief minister. The two leaders, in fact, have been at wit's end. They've been fighting it out over the last few months. That began with Navjot Singh Sidhu's visit to Pakistan and his hug, his controversial hug, with the Pakistan's Army Chief General Bajwa. Now, if Navjot Singh Sidhu indeed has been ousted from the cabinet, it will be no doubt Amrinder Singh's decision after several Congress leaders had also sided with him saying that Navjot Singh Sidhu must go. Amrinder Singh, in fact, just a day after the election results had slammed Navjot Singh Sidhu, blaming him for the party's loss in Bhatinda. Manjeet Saigal joins us now. Manjeet, so uh, first, uh, the uh, direct question, why was he missing from the cabinet? What are you hearing from your sources? We have seen, you know, uh, Navdot Singh Sidhu and the chief minister at uh, daggers drawn uh, and, and repeated verbal duels between the two. But uh, is that the reason for his absence from the Punjab cabinet meet? Maybe, Priya, uh, maybe, uh, Vantika, this could be the reason why Navjot Singh Sidhu uh, has not uh, clarified why he did not uh, uh, take part in the cabinet meeting, which uh, has concluded a short, a few uh, few minutes ago. We are standing in front of uh, Navjot Singh Sidhu's home. Sidhu has called a press conference. Maybe he'll be clarifying why he did not take part in the uh, today's coveted uh, uh, cabinet meeting. But uh, all we know is that he is facing action from. Uh, uh, Captain Amrinder Singh uh, side as he was not happy with Navjot Singh Sid Sidhu uh, uh, bypassing his uh, authorities and directly approaching the party high command. Captain Amrinder Singh had also told the party high command that Navjot Singh Sidhu was not functioning uh, uh, properly. His department lacked uh, uh, will uh, and he, uh, the party also faced uh, uh, drubbing in the recent Lok Sabha elections. Uh, for instance, uh, the uh, constituency of the Punjab Congress chief Sunil Jakhar, uh, okay. where, where in urban areas party lacked uh, the support of the uh, voters, and in uh, rural areas party was performing well. Uh, so Navjot Singh Sidhu is being held responsible for parties driving in the urban areas, particularly be it the Batinda or be it the Gurdaspur. In, right. uh, in, right. Absolutely. Just stay on with me. Stay on with me, Manji. Just kindly be uh, on the line because uh, one has seen the uneasy and strained relationship uh, that Amrinder Singh, the Chief Minister, and Navjot Singh Sidhu have shared. And this was uh, evident when the Chief Minister said just a day after the Lok Sabha election results that it's Navjot Singh Sidhu who should be blamed for the party's dismal performance in Bhatinda. Secondly, what I had said from day one, that the Eda Pakistan, uh, the army chief, Benan, Apni, Yari Dikhoni, or Japhiya Ponia, who Sade Hindustani is no, but Dashni Karne, Kaskar, Sade service room. Because Roj, Sade Yatito Paneda, motor fire, a machine gun fire, and the Sade Monte Mardene. How can it be that the general who comes in there? and then we go and uh, hug that fellow, that is not acceptable. In some other news, there was VIP treatment for Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Kamil Nath's family at the Mahakal Temple in Ujjain, with the state police teams along with an ambulance escorting the Chief Minister's family members to the temple. A normal public were also stopped and barred from uh, their darshan till the Chief Minister's family were inside this temple. And that's not all. In a complete breach of protocol, uh, the, what we've been told is that six police and official vehicles were busy touring along the uh, Kamal Nath's family as part of the VIP movement. Ravish Pal Singh joins us for more on this. Ravish, so uh, what is the explanation for this uh, massive uh, deployment of police forces and ambulance uh, for the Chief Minister's nephew? What was the purpose? Uh, what does the Chief Minister's office have to say? Uh, first, let me tell you that no one from the government and no one from the uh, uh, state Congress party, no one is uh, any any no one is giving any statement on this right now but uh, this happened uh, to, uh, two days uh, this happened this whole incident happened two days back on Tuesday when CM Nephew went to Ujjain for uh, a private visit this was a private visit Avantika and that the protocol used for his nephew the CM Nephew was not as per the rule and now BJP is targeting and claiming Congress
for this and bjp uh, saying that this is a complete uh, and uh, reflection of vvip culture uh, because the people of the state bjp realized that people of the state are facing shortage of doctors but the cm nephew the local administration has given him an ambulance and also a convoy of six police vehicles and this is not the first time bjp also realized that vvip culture is uh, evident in congress they always use power for their family Before they came, when they came in power, it's nothing but it's a culture of Congress. So this is now become a political issue, and we have tried uh, two and three ministers here in uh, Madhya Pradesh, but they okay. are not saying anything on camera right now. All right, uh, Ravish, thanks so much for getting us up to speed and getting us more details on this VIP treatment for the Chief Minister's family uh, during their darshan at a temple in Ujjain. There's no end to the infighting in the Karnataka Congress government with senior congressman HK Patel hitting out at his own party man KJ George over a land deal opposing the Karnataka cabinet's decision of selling 3667 acres of land to the JSW Steel Authorities uh, HK Patel has accused the industries minister KJ George of hiding facts about dues owned by the company to the state Now he claims that Jindal Steel owns 2000 crore rupees to the state owned Mysore Minerals Limited and this has been conveniently ignored while making the lease land a freehold in favor of JSW Patel has now written two letters to the chief minister Ishtu Kumar Swami in this regard but despite that the minister KJ George went ahead with this deal claiming that Jindal has no dues My objection mainly was first they owe about more than 2000 crores to government and government instrumentalities i suggest the government that see you are giving you are trying to give them such a big piece of land that to on a concessional unreasonable rate and uh, uh, secondly they have made lot of violations of uh, agreement uh, you have to um, direct them to set all that right pay the dues when those are almost uh, people who are accused by lokayukta how come you give land on concessional basis see regarding uh, our senior hk patels uh statement i i don't because he is a senior leader he has got his own uh, uh, uh reasons maybe his own reasons every industrial policy every kind of state has industrial policy karnataka government has got industrial policy and our government has never uh, was the policy of the uh, industrial policy which is in our state whatever decisions taken by the cabinet cabinet concerning the jsw that uh, lease come sale did uh, so on it's under the policy of the industrial policy karnataka state more than 3667 acres they have taken decision in the cabinet to sold out so we are uh, uh, pro, uh, against to that and uh, in that uh, assembly mls meeting we are going to take decision and if necessary we will take agitation program throughout the state and i will uh, i will uh, going to force the uh, chief minister of karnataka to withdraw that order immediately because this value is uh, more than 1000 uh, crores so you can't uh, tell, sell that land for 1 crore to 50000 and we are uh, against to that what hk patel has taken decision is correct i will support him and also we are going to take it up very seriously Nagarjun Dwarka now joins us for this latest controversy in uh, the Karnataka Congress government. Nagarjun now uh, you know Mr HK Patel is no junior minister he's a senior congressman and he's making some very serious allegations against uh, Mr Patel of allotting this massive piece of land at a concessional rate to JSW group but does he have evidence to back these claims and what about the government has there been a reaction on the revelations being made by HK Patel? 
Well, Avantika, it's one of the kind of situation where BJP state president is extending support to HK Party, who is a senior Congress member. In one aspect, these two leaders have come together. That is the fight against cabinet decision to award the land around 3,667 acres of land in Ballari to J JSW Steel. At, at this point of time, what HK Party is saying, saying that the company still owes around 2,000 crore to the uh, government, while uh, the government has taken a decision that the uh, uh, lease land that is given to JSW will be sold to JSW itself. The land will be given to JSW, which is around 1,000 crore worth, uh, the cabinet has taken the decision. HK Patel is saying that the case is still going on in the court and the dues are still to be paid to the government. And at this point of time, how can they convert the lease land to the uh, to be sold to JSW? The BJP and also HK Patel and other senior members are feeling that the lease period should be continued, maybe extended to a 99-year period instead of rather, rather selling the whole land, around 1,000 crore land to JSW. Other, on the other hand, JSW is just saying it's a political uh, agenda politics that the, both the parties are playing and they have stuck to all the rules and regulations that the government has prescribed and they have not done anything wrong is what JSW is saying at this point of time. The cabinet also right. is still adamant that uh, they would go on to f f go on further and stick to the decision. Okay, all right. So that final decision has been taken. I'm going to leave it uh, at that. Nagarjun, thanks so much for joining us. And moving on now from Karnataka to West Bengal, there is no end to the political murders in the state as another Trinamool Congress worker was allegedly killed by BJP Kader in Kooch, Bihar. Trinamool Congress worker Ajijar Ali was returning back home when he was attacked by assailants. He was declared dead on arrival at the hospital. This comes a day after Trinamool Congress leader Nirmal Kundu was also shot dead by bike-borne assailants in West Bengal's non-24 Parganas. The police have detained two BJP workers in connection with the murders, but politics over the latest killings has begun with the chief minister announcing that she will pay a visit to the family of the deceased. Meanwhile, Bengal food minister Jyoti Priya Malik has given an ultimatum to the BJP saying that violence should end within 10 days or the party will face consequences. Just on Saturday, two TMC workers were murdered, one in my constituency in Nimta, another in Kujbihar. And all over the states, the BJP has been overtly aggressive with their newfound strength of CPM deserters and Tinamul Congress deserters. There शासन प्रशासन में कोई कंट्रोल नहीं है ममता बनर्जी की इसलिए हर जगह खून हो रही है तो भाजपा का कोई संबंध नहीं है वो अपना पाक साफ करे जो दोषी है उसको सजा दे Trinamool Congress MP Shukoto Roy in fact hit out at the home minister Amit Shah saying that it's unfortunate that he is the home minister of the country It is unfortunate that Amit Shah has been accused of Severe violations of law in the past is now in charge of all law and order in the country. Manokia Loewal joins us for more on this. Manokia, but why is the TMC blaming the BJP? Why the needle of suspicion on the BJP? And rather than pointing fingers at the Home Minister, why is the state government not being able to bring law and order under control? That's a very pertinent question and given the understanding that we've seen the violence that has erupted post-poll, it's nothing new in West Bengal but this is happening for the first time where the rival is BJP and has been seeing a sharp rise in not just the number of seats but also the polling percentage. Now this has of course come as a shocker for TMC, not ready to believe on what has been happening on ground. The toughest part would be on how to contain the situation. But the big question is with Mamta Banerjee now sitting on dharnas one after the other, be it Naihati municipality or be it Nimta, which happens to be not 24 Parganas has seen the maximum eruption and violence in past few days. But Avantika, let me tell you that this uh, entire episode is here to stay because the violence has just begun and what we've gathered from earlier political elections also and post-poll violence, this of course will have long-term effects not on just on this election but also in days to come and the blame game would even intensify. Absolutely. Uh, Manogi, I'm going to leave it at that. Thanks so much for joining us. In some other news, the Reserve Bank of India has uh, cut the repo rate by 25 basis points to 5.75% from 6% with immediate effect for the third time in a row. Now, what it really means, what it comes down to is that the loans are going to be uh, much cheaper 
home loans will be cheaper and uh, it will also eliminate charges on the transactions online, the NEFT transfers that might lead to banks to reduce their lending rates to individuals and industries. Repo rate is the interest rate at which the Reserve Bank of India lends money to banks. The rate is used by monetary authorities to control inflation and it lets banks lower the marginal cost of funds which directly impact one's loans. The committee headed by Reserve Bank of India also decided to change the stance of monetary policy from neutral to accommodative. The meeting comes at a time when India's GDP growth rate stands at 5.8%, a five-year low under the Modi government. Even though inflation has remained very much under control, liquidity has been in deficit mode for the past few months. The decision has been to reduce the repo rate by 25 basis points and also to change the stance of monetary policy from neutral to accommodative. The unanimous vote reflects the resolve of the MPC to act decisively and act in time. The MPC noted that the May 31st, 2019 data release of the National Statistical Office showed that the GDP growth for 2018-19 has been placed lower by 20 basis points at 6.8%. Uh, relative to its February 28th estimate. In Q4 18-19, GDP growth decelerated sharply to 5.8%, down from 6.6% in Q3 and 8.1% uh, a year ago. Managing Editor Business Today, Rajiv Dubey joins us for more on this. Uh, Rajiv, this is the third straight cut in repo rates, uh, but the earlier two ones didn't necessarily boost the economic growth. Do you uh, see this step to infuse life into the economy? Will there be more income given to the farmers, which perhaps would have a direct impact on consumption? I mean, even for businessmen, manufacturing has slumped in the FI19 quarter as well. So what do you really think is the reasoning behind the latest repo rate cut? So Avantika, it's clearly in the right direction. It's also, uh, you know, indicative of the fact that the RBI and the government both are aware of the fact that the Indian economy is decelerating, is slowing down. It still hasn't hit the bottom. And so they have reduced the repo rates just to give that small fillip to the economy for uh, individuals and for industry to borrow more. But the problem that has happened is that the RBI in the past five years has cut repo rate by 2.25 percent and so far if you look at just the India's just India's largest uh, bank SBI it has reduced rates by lending rates by only 0.6 percent so the transmission of repo rate cut hasn't been happening to the consumers and happened. to the industry and, and Rajiv it hasn't how can happened. that be corrected so that is something that the RBI has to work with uh, with the banks. Even the government has to work with the banks. You know, government is the is the primary is the majority owner and sometimes wholly owns uh, some of the largest banks in the country. So government can easily nudge those banks into falling in line. Right. And that right. is something that has not been happening. That's an interesting point uh, you make there, Rajiv. Thank you so much for joining us. Clearly hit hard by the five-year low GDP growth and a 45-year uh, high unemployment rate of 6.1%. The newly formed government has also reconstituted eight committees to target unemployment. The Prime Minister is all set to form a cabinet committee on employment and skill development. This panel will be led by the Prime Minister and will also include 10 union ministers, including the Home Minister Amit Shah, the Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman, Piyush Goel, Dharmendra Pradhan, among the others. The Cabinet Committee is now to be set up to boost employment and investment with an aim to curtail the current crisis. Thanks for watching the video. For more such news and updates, please like, share, and subscribe to India Today. Also, check out our other great videos from our channel. We know you would love to.